Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Daly, Commander of 2nd Battalion, 205th Regiment, welcome to today's graduation ceremony. This ceremony marks the culmination of 15 days of rigorous and intensive training, testing these officer candidates' leadership abilities and potential to be an Army officer. We are honored to have distinguished guests in attendance today. Brigadier General Paul T. Sellers, Commanding General of the Washington Army National Guard, Colonel Jack Mushalo, Chief of Staff of the Washington Army National Guard, and Colonel Tim Osmer, Commander of the 205th Regional Training Institute. Commanders, senior NCOs, and friends and families of the 205th Regiment, thank you for your attendance today in this significant event. The Commander of Troops for today's ceremony is Officer Candidate Jacob Lewis. The adjutant for today's ceremony is officer candidate Kyle Moulton. Sound attention. Sound adjutant's call. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the invocation. Today's official party is Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Daly, commander of the uh, 2nd Battalion, 205th Regiment, and Lieutenant Colonel Nikki Inskeep, camp commander of Officer Candidate School, Phase 3, Class 24001. <laughs> Today's invocation will be given by Chaplain Paulson. Let us pray. Almighty God, we gather here today filled with gratitude and pride as we celebrate the hard work and accomplishments of these outstanding officer candidates. We thank you for guiding them through the rigorous journey of training, assessment, and personal growth that has led them to this significant milestone. Bless these graduates as they step forward to embrace their future roles as leaders. Grant them wisdom and courage to face the challenges ahead, strength to uphold the values of honor, duty, and integrity, and compassion to lead with empathy and respect. We take a moment to give thanks for the families and friends back home who have supported these candidates throughout their journey. May they find joy in this accomplishment and continue to be a source of strength and encouragement for each and every one of them. Bless all the officers, NCOs, and soldiers who have helped make this court such a success and keep us all safe as we return to our respective states and homes. We pray all this in your holy name. 
Amen. Audience, please be seated. Bring your units to attention. Colors are present. Present it to me. Statue, priest, and arms. Bring your units to priest and arms. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Eight states are represented on the field today, with these officer candidates completing a rigorous OCS phase three. The third phase of officer candidate school is, de is designed to train, develop leadership, and evaluate officer potential. This is achieved through a tiered training structure using light infantry tactics as the instructional vehicle. Through these challenges, all of the candidates have persevered. They have demonstrated the technical and tactical skills necessary to successfully complete all missions to standard. Most importantly, they have proven they have the leadership abilities of a commissioned officer in the United States Army. Congratulations on a job well done. At this time, awards are being presented to the top officer candidates from each platoon. From 1st Platoon, candidate William Morrow from Arizona. Thank you. 
From second platoon, candidate Kevin Egger from Oklahoma. And from third platoon, candidate Alexander Stern from Illinois. Let's give a big round of applause to these candidates for their outstanding accomplishments. On behalf of the United Services Automobile Association and Army Sabres presented to the honor graduate, officer candidates competed for this award based on their overall performance during this phase of training and the results of a leadership selection board. Lieutenant Colonel Inskeep will now present the Army Sabre Honor Graduate Award to officer candidate Andrew Wilcox from Arizona. Let's give a big round of applause to this candidate for his outstanding accomplishments. Finally, we will recognize the top platoon trainer for their efforts during this phase. Will the following platoon trainer post? Platoon trainer, Captain Matthew Means from Washington. Let's give another big round of applause to this cadre member for their outstanding accomplishments. Ladies and gentlemen, the Washington Army National Guard Commanding General, Brigadier General Sellers. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity. I don't know that I can say anything better than what Chaplain uh, Paulson presented, but I'll give it a shot. Um, if you remember what he said, uh, take that with you for sure. Um, as you move on to your next phase of development, no doubt you are full of excitement about all the possibilities. The world is your oyster. And I have personally very fond memories of this time when I went to OCS, infantry training, Bradley leader course in ranger school, one full year at Fort Moore, leaving, living La Vida Loca with hundreds of my peers, working hard and playing hard. It didn't seem readily apparent to me at the time that I was developing my leadership, but in hindsight, it was an incredible developmental period that prepared me for leading soldiers in Iraq, Afghanistan, and about 15 other countries. You are about to enter a great period of your life that you too will look back on fondly. There are two things I want, to, uh, I want you to keep in mind as you go boldly into this new critical phase of your leadership training. If you carry this understanding with you from, from the beginning, then you'll have a better grasp on your own potential and development at the end of your training. I whittled it down to two things from about 50, because I know some of you guys got to catch a flight and I don't see anyone taking notes. So first, be proficient. As you move on to your next phase, you will focus on learning the specifics of your job. Whatever your branch, you'll be inundated with facts, TTPs, lessons learned and drills that you must remember in your new role as a leader. Whether it's the proper processing of a 5988 Echo, assaulting a bunker, or countering network hackers, you have to know how to do your job. That is how you build respect and rapport with your first unit. You won't be the expert. Your NCOs are there for that. But you have to know how to implement their expertise to affect mission success. Simultaneously, you'll be tested in the fundamentals in leadership. While you are learning all of the charts and darts and mathematical calculations to be a successful uh, field artillery officer, you'll also be charged to account for your fellow students' whereabouts, who's at sick call, who got in trouble over the weekend, what's the plan for getting to the range and collecting sponsors for your flag football team. All these things are building you up as a leader and you won't even recognize it. It is just stuff that needs to get done and you do it because you don't wanna fail individually and you want the team to succeed collectively. Directly rolled up in your proficiency as a leader is fitness. It enables you to function in high stress for long hours in tough environments. Without it, you burn out early and can't lead effectively. So lead by example with your fitness. You never know when you'll be called to answer the nation's interests. 
So be physically fit. Being proficient in your military skills is critical to the development of you, to the team that you lead. It is the foundation of your personal development, credibility, and survival as a leader. So be a sponge, soak up as much knowledge as you can in this next phase and be proficient. Second, be compassionate. Within that word is passion. You have to have a passion for leading people to be successful. Some of you may not actually have that yet, but you'll develop it in this next phase when you get set in certain, certain circumstances. It could be hidden in there and under the right circumstances, it'll blossom. But I say compassionate because passion needs to be directed in the right, on the right azimuth. You have to care about the lives of those entrusted to you, not just passionate about telling them what to do. Compassion tells those you lead that you are willing to do all the things that you are asking them to do, that you are not above it. One definition I pulled off the internet says compassion means to empathize with someone who is suffering and to feel compelled to reduce their suffering. Let me tell you one thing for sure, you will suffer. The army makes things suck. What, see notes on fitness above. Okay, so be physically fit, that's a reminder. You will continually raise the bar on what you're able to endure. But those that you leave, lead have different levels of what they think their limit is. And you have to build them up and encourage them to perform regardless of what your job is in the army. And there are a million ways to encourage performance from whips and torches to candy and hugs. But if you are a compassionate leader, you'll be more successful and build a stronger team on the back end because you understand the people that you lead. But in the end, the team may even have one or two less members because you had to fire them. But even in that, you need to be compassionate. That's what professionals do. Be a compassionate leader who takes your leadership role seriously, understanding the treasure entrusted to you embodied by the people who call you sir or ma'am. In closing, I congratulate you on what you achieved to graduate OCS. I envy you what you're about to experience in the next phase of your leadership training. And I wish you all the best of luck, many successes, and I encourage you to enjoy every moment and see the value of each experience and how it develops you as a leader. Our feature is in good hands with young leaders such as yourselves. Soldier first, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Army song.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you for your attendance and support.